Good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I understand we are almost at the last leg of the Global Technology Summit this year, and I think it's very heartening to see so many members in the audience still wrapped in attention uh, late on a Saturday evening <clears throat> on what has been a fairly, at the end of what has been a fairly intense three and a half days of discussions on a range of issues on global technology. Uh, today, I've been asked to speak about what India plans to do and how India plans to work on the AI summit that our Prime Minister had offered to host at the time of the Paris AI summit. Many of my colleagues have been part of various panels and other discussions in the past three days on a range of issues. Most issues about AI and India's approach to AI would have been covered in many of these discussions. The one thing which is very clear about AI is that we have news every week, sometimes news every other day, and we need to keep catching up. And part of the way that we have approached it in the past little more than a year since the India AI mission was announced in March of 2024, and before that, when um, India started off on having a national strategy on AI with a paper from the Niti Aayog and so on, has fundamentally been that we've been flexible in our approach to this. Right from the beginning, we, we decided not to be doctrinaire, not to be dogmatic and say that you know, safety is the biggest concern, we have to regulate, we have to look at these issues. Um, we felt right up front, and this is, this is something which the Prime Minister and right from the top, this was a feeling that this is an opportunity, it depends on how well we use it, how we seize it, and we have to look at what the challenges are and see how we address our challenges in making most of this opportunity. So from that perspective, I think we've been open on this entire issue and we've also followed what the global governance has been sort of looking at on the AI issue. We've been in the forefront of that. In 2023, we were the chair of the GPE of the Global Partnership on AI. You would recall that we hosted two summit events here in Delhi, both of them which... Um, which brought in a lot of energy, particularly of innovation, with lots of startups and others getting into the act in a big way. It is with the same spirit that we have approached the three AI summits that have been held so far. The first one, the AI Safety Summit at Bletchley Park, late in 2023, subsequently the summit in Seoul, and of course, the uh, summit earlier this year in uh, February in <clears throat> Paris where India was invited to be the co-chair. As you can see, the theme of these summits have moved from safety to action in the Paris summit. Now we believe it is time to start talking about impact. It's been almost about two to three years of this journey and I think many people are impatient to see actual impact of what AI can do and what AI can deliver and what, what can actually happen. And when we, see, when we say impact again, I think we need to look at it in a positive framework in terms of what it can actually deliver. The expectations and hopes in terms of what AI can do for India, a country like India, and likewise the rest of the global south in terms of raising the overall productivity in various real sectors of the economy in ensuring that there is greater efficiency and effectiveness in governance and thereby sort of significantly improving economic growth and, and promoting prosperity is the one angle that I think is foremost in India's mind and how we can actually be disruptive in enabling this through uh, innovation, innovation and startup-driven approach is what India is seriously looking at, and I think this is an approach that needs to be looked at in the rest of the world as well. Initially, of course, there were 
a number of fears about the overall costs, whether it's affordable for a country like India, whether we can actually get the compute capacity together, whether we can get uh, the human resources together to actually build models, whether we can create applications which can be sort of deployed in the field and so on. But if you look at the India AI mission and the seven verticals there, I think it addresses the entire slew of issues. There is something in it literally for everybody in terms of enterprises, researchers, and others wanting access to AI compute, which is a primary requirement. Clearly, there is a vertical which addresses that, and already we have about 15,000 um, 15, GPU worth of compute already available, plus more to be added in due course. Likewise, if you look at what is happening on the models front, we should very shortly be announcing which one will be the first of the India Foundation models to be built. There is work going on there. If you come to the issue of data, and data is a critical element of what needs to be done, we launched the AI course as a platform where about 300 plus data sets are already being shared and more are being added as we speak. And if you come to the issue of uh, applications, and which is where I think most of the action will lie in a country like India, we again find that there has been tremendous enthusiasm, more than 900 applications for the first round and more than a similar number in the second round. Currently, most of them are confined to areas of governance which the government is interested in, but increasingly we believe it needs to be thrown open to look at other challenges which, which address society at large or the economy at large, and we'll have to see how we take it forward. So all of this means that we have addressed each of these segments. Likewise, in the skilling segment, we have to look at it all the way at the top of the line in terms of having you know, very, very competent and capable PhD candidates who can work on many of these research projects, and which is what has driven most of the AI research around, uh, around the world, and we are supporting that, all the way down to ITI polytechnic level students who can help with data annotation, and there could be a large number of jobs there. And the real story, I think, for India's IT, ITES industry, in a sense, it's for them possibly another Y2K moment in terms of ensuring that most of the applications which are being developed are effectively laid out and delivered and actually uh, um, deployed in a number of organizations, whether they are government organizations, enterprises, firms, and so on. So that would be a huge opportunity for them. So in that sense, if you really look at what it all offers for India and through India to the rest of the world, given our overall DPI story, eventually, probably, as the Prime Minister indicated and as the Minister for Electronics and Information Technology also spoke about earlier in Parliament, the issue is really, I think, eventually to have a DPI layer kind of interacting with AI and enabling that to actually be used more widely so that there's even more innovation, not just at the application level, but at the agent level, agentic level, in order to take it to the next stage of how it can be applied. And this is clearly something that we can share with the rest of the world where it is needed. Um, data center capacities will have to come up. India is a good location where this can be created. Uh, likewise, the compute capacity where it comes up will need to be shared with other places in the world where it requires to be created. Uh, we've had discussions with the United Nations as well to see how this could be enabled. So in that sense, India not just wants to use AI as something that it can do for itself, but wants to sort of take a leadership position on behalf of the Global South in seeing that it is deployed across the world. So these are, these are the efforts that we are making, and I think the key element of the way the government is working on AI is that it's a complete collaborative approach. No part of the India AI machine, um, emission actually works in isolation of either private sector, academia, or civil society. We have continuous engagements on each of these verticals, and it's been a collaborative effort in which we would like to continue. And it's that theme in terms of bringing in more and more stakeholders. That is the theme we would like to take into the AI Impact Summit, which we would, ho which we would host early next year, 
and ensure that multiple stakeholders become part of this, and we should be able to actually showcase all that has been done here and in other parts of the world in terms of impact by then. Thank you very much.